The Proving Ground Strike is this week's Grandmaster Nightfall for Incomplete Conquerors. So let's get right into that. Quick weapon shout out before I get to the strike itself. So the strike is Solar Burn. So Solar is definitely going to be your go-to for everything, basically. It's not a mandatory, but it's the favorite choice. So for example, Cataclysmic, Bait and Switch, Potential Charm is by far the best heavy weapon to use as far as Solar goes. Although I will say Storm Chaser, even though it's not Solar Burn, still keeps up with just basically everything for every GM minus Inside Terminus, but that's a whole other story. So for Heavy, Cataclysmic, you have this roll, is really good. If not, if you have a Storm Chaser, use that. Also, you could use things like Galahorn, you could use if Eyes of Tomorrow, any Solar Heavy that basically has that meta play at all can be used in this slot, honestly, even like a 1,000 Voices. Now, the other reason to run a Legendary Heavy is because you could use Arbalist. Arbalist still dunks on Anti-Barrier Champions, regardless of how far you are, and it's just a one-shot instantly, plus it's also really good in the tank room. There's really no reason to not run Arbalist, uh, other than you might not have it yet. That's essentially it. It's insanely good, still, and it's a high recommend for this strike. Then, outside of Arbalist and whatever heavy you may have picked, for your primary choice, you can go for things like Vision of Confluence. I love this scout. It's still, in my opinion, one of the top scouts in the game, and it's Solar Burn this week. And you can run Rewind Rounds, High Cal, Firefly, Disruption Break, all this juicy stuff. One of the best scouts to use. Highly recommend if you ever went into Vogue and got one of these. Another solid choice would be Staccato. Now, it's not easy to get a good roll of this. It's just a world drop, and there's plenty of RNG involved. But I did want to mention this anyway, just because it is solar and has things like incandescent, explosive rounds, etc. Then, moving on to Pulses, in case you want to run a Pulse. For Pulses, you could use a Solar Pulse, or you could run basically any that you may have with Adaptive Munitions. So, for example, Insidious can roll Adaptive Munitions. You could run this, or you could run Stars and Shadow because it's solar. You can also run an Akma PR6, which has Adaptive Munitions and can roll Adrenaline Junkie. But again, this is a World Drop, so it's kind of hard to get. If you happen to have one in your vault, though, this is a prime candidate for this strike for several reasons. Finally, you can also run a Glaive if you really felt like it. Glaives aren't terrible to run in most GMs, although on Cabal it is not a one-shot, whereas, let's say, a Goblin for the Vex would be. However, it's unstoppable this season, and it's not terrible damage, and you could use it even when you run out of ammo. So, it's a choice to make, but overall, I would still recommend Arbalist, a Linear, etc., and then a primary weapon over a Glaive. First off, the beginning of the strike, left is always best. The left side and sticking to it is by far, in my opinion, the easiest way to just get right through this first section all the way into the ship. All you gotta do is just keep to the left, get on the pipes, kill some turrets, go forward, kill some more turrets, and that's it. You can choose to either kill the barrier and the unstopped champion while you're on these pipes, or you can just go forward towards the end and the champions will just gradually follow you towards the end. Just player preference up to you. Once you get there, just clear ads as slow or as fast as you want, it doesn't matter. Once you do that, the door will open and the big Chungus will come out with some more enemies. In this part, you just kill the enemies around him, then start doing damage on him. Once his barrier shield is up, all you're going to want to do is create a diversion and have one person, maybe two people, split off from you, while one person can fight the ads on the left, and then one or two people can make a diversion to the right and go towards the barrier. For the barrier itself, all you're going to want to do is just line yourself up with the pole in the middle. Is it a stripper pole? A flagpole. It's a flagpole. You line yourself up with the flagpole, make sure you're directly aligned with it so that the boss cannot directly shoot at you and have line of sight. As long as you're in front of the pole, the boss will not shoot. Also worth noting that the boss cannot stop, so you can actually walk towards the pole as close as you want as possible to kill the pole, and the boss will not hurt you. Now, obviously, once you do destroy this pole, yes, the barrier does go down, and at this point, you do need to run. Once you break the thing, you're good to go. You can split off, regroup, whatever, get to a section where the boss can't nuke you, and then you kill him, and you're done with this section. Next up, the tank room. So, this room, to start off at least, really doesn't have one specific thing that you must do. However, obviously things like, well, a banner shield, things like that do help you in this room just because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of enemies to take down. But in generally things going by in order of operations, you should drop down, pick a side, left or right, doesn't matter which one. Regardless of which side you pick, immediately look for the snipers and kill them left and right. There's one on each side. After that, 
your choice becomes really, do you want to kill most of the champions in the middle, or do you want to kill the interceptors that are right in front of you? Now, worth noting that the giant wall in front of you actually serves multiple purposes. Not only can it help you block shots from incoming ads from the middle, but it also blocks the interceptor from shooting you, and also has a little crack in the ground on the bottom where you can take advantage by standing on the ramp and shooting the interceptor through it, eventually killing the interceptor, although it'll be mind-numbingly slow. Now, another thing you could do if you really felt like it was for your primary, instead of bringing in like a vision of confluence for solar, you could have brought in a void for void shields on the interceptors for scions and take them down that way. In case you're wondering why I didn't mention bringing arc or void in general is because this strike, basically the tank room has RNG shields. It could have all solar, or it could have all void, or it could have all arc. There's really no way to predict what you're going to have, and you shouldn't just base your loadout entirely on trying to have elemental roulette, and also, you know, arbalist. So, realistically, who cares if you're going to have a couple of enemies to kill with an off shield, right? Now, moving on, once you've done most of the major killing, or the interceptors, or both, make sure there's always one yellow bar remaining before you kill the two interceptors in the back. You always want to have one yellow bar, and this is why. Once you have killed all the interceptors, all four, and the only thing remaining in the room is the yellow bar enemy, it doesn't matter, it could be a champion or just a scion, a centurion, whatever, what you're going to want to do is rotate to the top left side of the room, blow up all the barrels while you're heading there, by the way. Once you get to the top left side of the room and you get to the final door right before where the tanks come out, you're going to want to kill that last yellow bar enemy. What this is going to do is going to start the next wave of enemies to come out, the tank wave, if you will. You're going to have several yellow bars slash red bar enemies come out to your left. What you can do here is immediately have a well ready or any super really. You can have hammers, blade barrage, whatever, tether. And then nuke these enemies outright as soon as they come out of the door. The moment they're down, you're going to have the door to the tank opening in front of you. And you're going to have a couple of seconds to just nuke the tank down in its legs without it moving or shooting. You can take this tank down immediately and have a lot of breathing room out the gate while being in a protective well or bubble, etc. Then, from there, you can peek shoot the other tank. Again, you have a couple of seconds to shoot it before it can shoot you, and take down the second tank, either immediately or just gradually over time. Remember, you have walls in front of you to protect you from the tank shooting you as long as you don't peek for several seconds at a time. Also, the enemies from the middle will be shooting you, but you will have coverage to kind of look through the cracks and shoot them down. You'll have two barrier champions really to contend with, and that'll be about it. As long as you take down the enemies that come out of the left door and then the tank right in front of you, you will have plenty of breathing room to just slowly tackle the rest of the room and be done. And after you've done that, it's smooth sailing. You go to the next part. It's not really worth mentioning all that much. It's just go forward, kill champion, kill yellow bar, kill some ads, dunk the balls, etc. The only thing I can really tell you is look out for Dwayne The Rock Johnson from killing you in midair while you're jumping towards the balls. Quick thing to mention for the boss fight itself, you want to have this Armor of the Dying Star mod on twice, actually. It, the reason why you want to do this is because it can eat one of the fireballs from the boss. Now, obviously, you don't want to get hit by any of them, but if one happens to hit you, at least this will give you the survival that you need to tank one shot instead of just outright dying immediately. This also stops the boss from one-shotting you with the Brockus cannon, the void gun that he shoots you with. So that's worth noting. Also, you could run one of these and then Concussive Dampener if you can't afford to have run two of them on at the same time. Now, the boss fight itself, you want to plant yourself to the top left or the top right of the arena when the fight begins. It doesn't matter which side. You're going to have the boss come out, shoot fireballs, of course, shoot those fireballs down. And then you're going to have two Legionnaires and a Phalanx on each side drop down during the fight, take out these enemies, and then the boss damage phase begins. At this point, you're going to have two choices. You can either wait out the waves as the fireballs come at you, there's about 13 waves or so, and then the balls stop, or you can just shoot the boss down and then have the shield come up, and then have a person that's brave enough to go in, let's say with like Invis, Deadfall combination, to take down the flagpole. Or just have the 13 waves come out. Once those are done, circulate around the boss and make sure somebody's baiting the aggro and then somebody else goes in from behind and you shoot the terminal down. Now, obviously, recommending if you're not experiencing this strike, I would go with the second choice of just waiting out the fireballs. You can do this for each phase, by the way. It's, like I said, 13 waves or so each phase and then they're done and it's just gun shooting from that on. Now, once you've taken the boss down, 
to 66%, aka two-thirds remaining. The boss summons one unstoppable champion on each side of the arena. You can take out either one first, doesn't matter which side, like I mentioned. So, let's say you're planting on the right side, just look at the right door right in front of you as the boss puts up the shield. The unstoppable will come out, give it two seconds for the animation to happen, because if you don't, the stun will not happen and the champion will still move towards you. It's kind of dumb, but it is what it is. After two seconds, stun the champ, kill the champ, and then you can choose to either shoot the fireballs down or just walk into the little oven to your left and just sit there till the fireballs are done and you're safe. Then at this point, you just go hunting for the other unstoppable, make sure he's not to your left or to your right, and then stun, kill, maybe use Aeons to get ammo if you need it, and that portion is done. At this point, wait for the fireballs to be done, go in, break the flagpole, there you go, the boss will start moving again, and then you can start damaging the boss for another 33%. Also, while this is happening, you'll have two more Phalanxes and four more Legionnaires to come out on the arena. Make sure you kill those, and then move on with your damage. Now, you're going to repeat the same process as before. The only difference this time will be once you get the boss down to 33%, you're going to want to actually start dashing towards the beginning of the room where you entered instead of staying where you are and spawn killing and unstoppable. The reason for this is because the boss will be going back above you where the boss came out and shooting fireballs at you non-stop, making your position really dangerous and there's no sense in doing that. Instead, you're going to go to the beginning of the room, wait for the unstoppables to come to you, and you can safely kill them while safely shooting fireballs if needed. Kill the unstops, and then again, wait out the fireballs, safely make your way up to the boss, make sure somebody's baiting the boss's aggro, and then somebody else is going behind, shooting the flagpole, taking down the flagpole, and then you're in the final phase where the boss will start rotating around everywhere without a shield. There will be, again, a new wave of adds. Kill the adds, and then split up, make sure you're never together, and then keep rotating as the boss follows one of you, Keep shooting the fireballs, and then finally nuke the boss down to zero health, and bam, you're done with this GM. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is once you get your footing in there and some experience. It's really not all that bad, it's just a long strike. So hopefully this guide has helped you. Uh, like, share, subscribe would be appreciated, and uh, good luck on your GM hunting, corrupted, conqueror, all that good stuff, gilding. Enjoy. See you in the next one. <laughs> Goodbye.